Hey guys, take a look at this white crystalline powder with a faint odor of benzaldehyde that I'll use for today's chemical reactions. This is dry benzoyl peroxide. Besides being used as a remedy for pimples, it also used as a source of free phenyl radicals in organic chemistry, which in its turn makes it a widely used radical initiator in the chemistry of polymer synthesis. When dry benzoyl peroxide heated above its melting point, approximately 100 degrees Celsius, instantaneous and explosive decomposition occurs without flame. But the decomposition products are flammable. Now let's put a little bit of benzoyl peroxide on a hot plate and see what will happen. Slightly wet benzoyl peroxide is used in filmmaking to simulate the explosions of big volumes of fuel products, because sitting this kind of reagent on fire results in the production of rich flame and soot. A commercially available reagent usually contains 25% water. Such benzoyl peroxide is resistant to physical impact and hard to set on fire with a naked flame. Benzoyl peroxide is incompatible with most of organic compounds of the amines class. So, for instance, the book Reactive Chemical Hazards says that addition of a drop of aniline to 1 gram of the benzoyl peroxide leads to mildly explosive decomposition after a short delay. Well, let's test it. Yeah, it really is so, but I went one step further and decided to find out what will happen if I add a much more reactive phenyl hydrogen. And this is a reaction with triethylamine. Well, now I'll showcase radical polymerization using benzoyl peroxide. So guys, this is methyl acrylate. Methyl acrylate is an organic compound, the methyl ester of acrylic acid. Its label says that it is stabilized with hydroquinone monomethyl ether. This substance prevents its autopolymerization, which allows it being stored for a long time without any change. To perform the polymerization reaction, we need to get rid of this stabilizer. It can be done by adding a little amount of alkali dilute solution.
As a result, we got stabilizer free methyl acrylate. Then it needs to be distilled, as it is a bit soluble in water. Although, this will not influence the demonstration of this reaction in any way. Now I'll transfer the upper layer of methyl acrylate in another test tube and add a little bit of benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide starts to decompose into free radicals at a temperature of more than 60 degrees Celsius. So, in order to initiate the reaction, we need to heat the test tube. Now you've seen radical polymerization, that resembles boiling. Forming gas bubbles represent carbon dioxide. So, when we heat methyl acrylate with benzoyl peroxide, benzoyl peroxide forms three phenyl radicals and carbon dioxide. This step is called initiation. After the radical initiator is formed, it attacks a monomer. During initiation an active center is created, from which a polymer chain is generated. The chain propagates until there are no more monomers. As radicals continue to grow, the system's viscosity increases. With this increase, the lifespan of macroradicals increases too, which leads to the acceleration of polymerization at late step, due to the concentration of said macroradicals. That late step of the polymerization is taking place right now. Therefore, you can see transparent, gel-like methyl acrylate polymer gather in a test tube. By the way, this reaction can be initiated by irradiating methyl acrylate and benzoyl peroxide with a 450 nanometers blue laser diode.
Now let's take a newly formed polymer out of a test tube. Take a look at this soft, sticky, stretchy material. Polymethyl acrylate is destructed at 250 degrees Celsius, forming carbon dioxide, methanol and low molecular weight polymers, but are even more sticky than this one. Thanks for watching guys and huge thanks to my patrons and donators. You are my initiators and you generate power for me to create new videos that make this channel stay in the propagation step and more and more viewers are joining it. Hope you enjoyed, see you in the next video.